well dear students welcome to my next class right in today's class seventh chapter we are dealing for first pu there is a structural organization in animals the last topics few topics are remaining that is about frog we will be discussing about circulatory system of frog first circulatory system of frog circulatory system of frog okay the circulatory system of frog is of closed type what type right it is of closed type why because there are presence of presence of presence of clear the the circulatory system of frog is of closed type why because it is closed type because of the presence of what blood vessels arteries and veins it is of closed type clear then it consists of it consists of heart it consists of what it consists of heart then it consists of blood then it consists of blood vessels blood vessels there are three components of the circulatory system one is heart blood and blood vessels the circulatory system of frog is of closed type because it has definite blood vessels and it is of closed type clear when we talk about heart the heart of the frog has three chambers it is a three chamber out of this three chamber two are auricles and one is ventricle two are auricles and one is ventricle in three chamber there are two auricles and one ventricle the right auricle receives a deoxygenated blood right auricle receives deoxygenated blood whereas the left auricle fine receives from lungs it receives oxygenated blood this oxygenated blood enters into ventricle through auriculo ventricular opening or aperture then from ventricle it is pumped fine clear and goes to all parts of the body so it has two auricles in that the right auricle and left auricle right auricle and left auricle the right auricle receives blood from other parts of the body the impure blood deoxygenated blood is received from all other parts of the body through veins into the right auricle from there it, it is pumped to lungs there it goes and purifies gets collects oxygen that blood pulmonary through pulmonary vein it comes to left auricle from left auricle this blood enters into ventricle clear through auriculo ventricular aperture from ventricle it pumps to other parts of the body through aorta through aorta then from aorta it, be, it branches that are as arteries the arteries are the blood vessels right so blood here next point is blood is red in color right oxygenated i mean red in color having rbc clear having rbc nucleated right rbc wbc is an important red in color because of hemoglobin because of hemoglobin when we talk about blood vessels there are arteries and veins the aorta branches into arteries supplies blood blood to all other parts of the body whereas veins they collect the impure blood from the other parts of the body towards the they supply towards the heart so this uh, arteries are connected to main two main organs they are connected to all main two organs here one is the liver by hepatic portal system hepatic refers to liver fine where where the blood goes fine and collects and and the and the de detoxification clear also process takes place in liver and then through through renal portal system what system A renal portal system it enters into kidneys enters into kidneys for purification for purification fine after purification of blood what is formed urine is formed so here so after circulation circulation is nothing but fine the circulation is of closed type in frog it gets a heart heart is three chambered having two auricles on the above and then one auricle below clear then two auricles the right auricle receives a deoxygenated blood from the other part of the body whereas the left auricle from lungs it receives oxygenated part of the oxygenated blood then it goes to ventricle through auricular ventricular aperture from ventricle it is pumped towards the other parts of the body through aorta aorta gets branches into different arteries fine like that like i mentioned two arteries like one is hepatic portal system other is renal portal system and through other arteries the blood is oxygenated blood oxygenated blood through arteries is supplied to all other parts of the body through venous system it is supplied through 
to write article the impure blood fine so the blood is red in color having nucleated rbc's fine clear wbc and platelets fine and red vessels arteries and veins in the in the kidneys this blood undergoes purification what happens there purification means blood is purified and urine is formed so that leads to next is excretory system what is it excretory system what do you mean by excretion the process of removal of metabolic nitrogenous waste fine clear so here this animal this animal is a ureotelic animal what are you ureotelic i have told you this fine in animal kingdom also what do you mean by that the animal which excretes its metabolic nitrogenous waste in the form of urea is what is known as ureotelic classical example amphibia and this frog clear don't uh, get confused it is there in water and all those things basically frog is a ureotelic animal most of its life is spent on the terrestrial habitat and it's a carnivorous animal hence it is absolutely fine uh, ureotelic animal clear it is excretes its its uh, excretory waste in the form of urea so the excretory system of frog consists of pair of kidneys pair of one pair of kidneys pair of kidneys these kidneys fine are dark reddish brown in color situated on either side of the vertebral column in the abdominal region towards the towards the pelvic region towards the lower abdominal region this kidneys consist of the structure and functional units of kidneys what yes what are they nephrons what are they nephrons they consist of nephrons nephrons the kidneys consist of what nephrons so in this nephrons clear in excretory chapter you might have studied in detail fine glomerular filtration fine selective absorption secretion all those things so in nephrons what happens here the blood is purified blood is purified and urine is formed urine is formed so after that in from the kidneys what can, what are this one pair of ureter one pair of ureter ureter tubular structure what are ureters tubular structures that connects kidneys and the urinary bladder so ureters collect the urine from from kidneys which has been purified in nephrons through ureter ureter tubular structure pipe like structure tubular structure that connects the urinary bladder connects the urinary bladder from ureter from kidneys to ureter from ureter to urinary bladder the urinary bladder opens into a common opening called cloaca what is known as cloaca i have told you in the beginning in general morphology also that this animal consists of a common opening called cloaca so here also it is cloaca fine through urinary bladder to cloaca along with the along with the undigested waste material the excretory waste material is also eliminated out of the body through cloacal opening cloacal opening clear i hope it's clear very easy very simple thing next one is next one is nervous system nervous system of frog clear nervous system of frog the nervous system of frog consists of central nervous system peripheral nervous system central nervous system peripheral nervous system cns pns autonomic nervous system is also there okay fine so central nervous system central nervous system consists of brain this is of brain the peripheral nervous system consists of cranial nerves and spinal nerves cranial nerves and spinal nerves so when we talk about central nervous system which consists of brain clear you all know that brain is situated in the head region where in the in the tip of the head region where it is harder harder covering is there that is known as cranium you all know in human beings also we call the same thing brain is protected in cranium in frog also the same terminology is, is used over here also so brain is protected in the cranium hard cranium this brain is further divided to three parts one is fore brain fore brain mid brain and yes of course correct what hind brain fore brain mid brain and hind brain fore brain is connected to all the sense organs that are found present in the head region like eyes ears there we don't call it as ears what we call yes tympanum tympanum olfactory lobes clear fine olfactory lobes fine for the nose fine optic lobes are they are connected to eyes fine they are connected to tympanum all factory lobes are connected to nostrils clear and the lobes are our lobes are connected nerves are connected to tongue and mouth so all these sense organs mouth tongue nose eyes and ears and tympanum are connected by four brain in the mid brain mid brain is connected to other visceral parts of the body like lungs heart stomach 
lungs heart and stomach clear whereas hind brain hind brain continues as medulla oblongata through spine through medulla oblongata it opens into foramen magnum where it is from here medulla oblongata clear from medulla oblongata it it opens into foramen magnum foramen magnum and it continues as what spinal cord it continues as spinal cord from hind brain from hind brain it a hind brain through medulla oblongata it continues from hind brain medulla oblongata continues hind brain is connected to other parts of the body like the lower parts of the body like hind limbs when kidneys testes and ovaries so these parts are connected to hind brain from hind brain medulla oblongata rises through medulla oblongata a opening is known as foramen magnum through this foramen magnum the brain continues hind brain continues as a spinal cord as spinal cord that what leads to peripheral nervous system in the peripheral nervous system we come across cranial nerves how many how many cranial nerves 10 pairs of cranial nerves how many 10 pairs it means 20 10 pairs of cranial nerves and 10 pairs of spinal nerves 10 pairs of cranial nerves and 10 10 pairs of spinal nerves are connected so the function of this cranial nerves and spinal nerves is to connect is to collect the stimulus from all other parts of the body through sensory neurons fine they supply towards the brain and central nervous system and then later through motor neurons fine the stimul the, the response this response is supplied means is, is passed on to other parts of the body this is about the nervous system it can serve central nervous system brain fore brain mid brain hind brain peripheral nervous system which can serve 10 pairs of cranial nerves and 10 pairs of spinal nerves autonomous nervous system also towards the periphery of the body all these helps in the collecting the information the stimulus and response fine coordination and controlling controlling functions has been will be performed by nervous system next moving on to reproductive system moving on to reproductive system next is moving on to a reproductive system the reproductive system of frog frog is a clear reproductive system of frog frog is a unisexual animal what animal is unisexual animal male reproductive system female reproductive system clear frog is a unisexual animal that is male animal is different and female animal is different so we have to discuss both the systems over here fine so reproductive system you all know is a system which is responsible for reproduction clear it consists of in case of male reproductive system in male frog male frog it consists of pair of testes but there's not one pair of one pair of testes they are the gonads they are the gonads fine clear in these testes fine these testes are connected fine through 10 to 12 10 to 12 vasa efferentia vasa efferentia what is this vasa efferentia they are the narrow tubular structures narrow tubular structures that are the link between the testes and the other organs of the system fine so main organs are testes they are the gonads wherein the gametes are produced sperms are produced in the frog sperms are produced in the frog clear so gametes are produced fine from to the testes how many 10 to 12 vasa efferentia what is this number the vasa efferentia it comes in human reproductive system also in your second year so vasa efferentia the vasa efferentia passes through kidneys passes through kidneys by a structure known as mesorchium what is known as mesorchium through mesorchium then these vasa efferentia collects the sperms what they collect they collect and they pass the sperms and these vasa efferentia tubular structures tubular structures they come near the cloacal opening they come near the cloacal opening fine so here they collect the sperms and the sperms comes near the cloaca and they are ejected out eliminated out or ejected out into the into the external into the water body into the water body these sperms are ejected out into the water body clear understand because here the fertilization is external fertilization is external clear we we'll talk about that possibly 
Next. Fine. In female reproductive system, it consists of one pair of ovaries. Pair of ovaries. Ovaries. Right? These ovaries have one pair of one pair of ovary ducts. What has? Ovary ducts. These ovary ducts also they passes along the kidneys, along the kidneys. These ovary ducts carries ova. What they carry? Ova. They produce many ova. This ova is supplied to cloaca. Cloaca through ovary ducts. Through ovary ducts. Through cloacal opening. Cloacal opening. Here also through cloacal opening. Sponge are ejected. Here also cloacal opening. Sponge are ejected. Fine. When this male frog copulates, sits on the female frog and rubs to the rub to its body. Clear? The female frog releases ovum. The male frog simultaneously releases sperms. Where? In the water medium, in the water medium, though they are terrestrial animals, adult animals, when they for breeding purpose again they migrate to water medium. Fine, there the male frog sits on the female frog, fine, rubs the body, then the female frog releases the ova into the water body simultaneously from above. The male frog releases sperms, so fertilization is taking place outside the body, hence we call it as external fertilization. And where it takes place into the water medium, so fertilization takes place there, undergoes. It produces a zygote from there, the egg is formed, all the different stages are formed. Then the hatches, larva, clear? Larva is formed, that larva is known as a tadpole. You all very well know, since the larva of a frog, you have learned this from school, tadpole. So since the larva stage is there, tadpole is there, and this development is known as indirect development. And then indirect development, the characteristic of lar the larva tadpole is it, it possesses a small tail, post anal tail. After the cloacal opening, there will be a tail. As the metamorphosis takes place, this tail disappears. This tail disappears. Retroactive metamorphosis takes place. Disappearing of the tail takes place. Takes place. Growth and maturation of this animal takes place. Animal becomes matured and it is become adult. Fine. After adult animal, it becomes adult. It migrated towards the terrestrial habitat. It lives in the terrestrial habitat. Other purpose, other things I have told you: estivation, hibernation. Fine. Clear. It feeds on so many things. So it leads its life into the into the terrestrial habitat. After that, after that, again for breeding purposes, it goes to water. So you people subscribe my channel, YouTube channel, because I am Simon Desi. I am taking classes for second year also. Uh, need classes I am taking so that videos also you can get in your uh, mobile so that you can watch that simultaneously. So maybe shortly we are uh, starting uh, second year for you all, second year classes for you also. So this chapter is completed here. In my next class, I will be taking up uh, neat questions of the same chapter that is sexual organization animals. After completion of that, we will take up uh, digestion chapter most probably. So keep studying. God bless you. Good luck. Take care.